Good morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to the coast between Bexhill and Hastings. Now I've got a very interesting little project for you today. So come and join me and we'll paint together step by step. So let me explain. This is a photo taken by a friend of Margot's. Thanks Vicky. And we put it on the Facebook page for a little competition. And wow, we had about 150 entries of amazing paintings. So please stick around to the end because I've got a real treat for you. Which leads me on to a question which I'm often asked in my classes. And that is, Paul, how do I develop my own style? Now the best bit of advice I can give is don't even try. It will just come naturally. Because no one can paint like you. Some people like to paint lighter, some people like to paint darker, some like to put a lot of detail in, some like to paint nice and loose and free. Your personality will just come out in your work naturally and instinctively. So our job as tutors is to help you learn new techniques, show you new ways of painting things, but in the end your paintings will be uniquely yours because no one can paint like you and you just must learn to be proud of them. So let's get going, shall we? Okay, so materials for today. I'm having another try with this De La Rowney art board. It's got a cold press finish. It's 1.4 millimeters thick. So we shouldn't have any problems with warping or buckling. My paints are my normal three primaries, cobalt blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow, some yellow ochre, sap green, and some burnt umber. Just three brushes today, a mop, a number 12 round, and today a number eight round. Okay, so the drawing is quite tricky. So as ever, a template is free to download from my website, link in the description below. Now I've simplified it quite a bit and reduced the number of beach huts. Now, if you're having a go yourself, just be aware of the perspective here. As you can see, the huts here are very narrow, but as we move to the foreground, the width widens as they come towards us. And the rest isn't too bad, as all the horizontals are nice and straight and parallel to the paper. Now, for the sun here, I'm just drawing around a 2p coin. Now, I was going to give you a world coin equivalent guide, but I thought that's just silly. So it's about 25 mil across. And here I'm just masking out with some masking fluid or drawing gum. So here are just a couple of colours that I'm pre-mixing. And this is some alizarin crimson, just with a touch of cadmium yellow. Okay, so here I'm mixing a purpley grey using cobalt blue, with some alizarin crimson and just a touch of cadmium yellow to neutralize it. And I'm mixing lots of it. Now you could use some Payne's Grey with a touch of alizarin crimson dropped in, or even some Daniel Smith's Moon Glow if you have it, but this color should work really well. And off we go, totally wetting the board with my mop and just some clean water. Now I'm still using my mop today, a few streaks of the red mix and then dropping in a little cadmium yellow. Now in with that lovely grey mix all over the rest of the painting to try and create that subtle dawn mood to the whole painting. just a touch of alizarin crimson here. And here I'm just drying my brush and lifting out a few wispy clouds. Thank you. 
Now using the same grey mix and my number 12 brush, I'm painting in all this background area. And here I'm just adding in wet into damp a little watery mix of the grey with a touch of burnt umber. Next just some yellow ochre for the road. And dropping in some clean water and wet in wet some burnt umber. Now for this green I'm using the grey mix again but adding in a touch of sap green but I'm trying to keep the colours fairly muted and dull. It'll all help to create that early morning feel. Next, just a few shadows on the huts. Now I'm not going to try and match the same colours as on the photo, but I do like the subtle bluey grey tones, but please feel free to paint them in any colours you want. Just wait until you see the explosion of coloured huts in the samples at the end of the video. Now for these huts over on the left, I'm just going to put in some simple shapes and lines. There's no way that you could paint each separate hut, so it's just a loose impression. So now we need to let this totally dry, so it's a perfect time for a short break, and because it's early morning, a nice cup of Earl Grey. Next I'm going to start putting in a little detail in the middle ground using the same grey mix. Just make sure it's strong and dark. A bit like me really. <laughs> and I'm using my number 8 round for this.
Just a general tip here, it's always better to paint when you feel nice and relaxed and never put pressure on yourself to paint a masterpiece every time. Now I've said this before, but never be afraid to make a mistake. We all do it. If you enjoy the experience, it'll always show in your work. Here I'm just adding some watery cobalt blue. Now this artboard doesn't act quite the same as conventional watercolour paper. There's just not so much absorption. I suppose it's just a case of getting used to it. The obvious benefits being there's not a hint of warping or buckling. Next, with the dry brush technique, drag across the board and pick up some of the texture from the cold press finish. And I'm using some burnt umber here. Now the huts have had a chance to dry, I'm coming back in with that dark grey for some further details. If you have problems getting a dark enough value, just add in a touch of Payne's grey. And yes, a little more splattering here, just in the foreground with some burnt umber. It's 
so I've just decided that these huts could do with just a little more strength of colour. Okay, time to remove the masking fluid. Then, re-wetting with clean water just in the space where the sun is. And here is a very light wash of cadmium yellow. And then just a hint of alizarin crimson at the bottom. And one final little round of detail. Next, of course, a little softening of some of the hard edges with a damp tissue. Then finally, with a brand new white pastel pencil, a few little highlights and light details to give it just that little bit of sparkle. Now you could also use some white gouache or acrylic paint, white ink or even those white gel pens, but I like to use this pencil because it's so instant and you pick up that little bit of texture from the paper. And I think we're done. Sound effects please. Well I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Now coming up now is a real treat. I talked about the competition earlier and here are just 60. Now we picked them at random 
I would have loved to have shown them all, but it just would have gone on forever. So please take a look, stay to the end. The last one is a real treat. And what's great to see is how everybody has interpreted the same scene completely differently. So take care everyone. Look forward to seeing you all again next week. Happy painting. Bye for now.